Are you confused about how respawns work in the Hunter Call of the Wild? Do you wish you could spawn more diamonds, more rares, and possibly even that great one you've always been wanting? Today we're going to be talking about everything we know about how respawns work. Now, EW has definitely kept exactly how respawns work a secret up until this point, so what we know is what we have figured out from many, many hours of gameplay. Now, just last week, EW put out an update that had some serious ramifications for respawns. So today we're going to be talking about how respawns work, what you can do when they're not working, and how to speed up those respawns so that you can continue your grind. Now guys, let me know in the comments what the best trophy that you have ever spawned from doing a grind is. And somewhere in the video I am going to share a key phrase. Drop that in the comments for your chance to win a one month membership to the channel and we are going to head right into it. Now when you spot an animal on your map, that animal will always be on on your map until one of two things happen. Either you shoot it or you open up your map to multiplayer and someone else shoots it or EW does a population reset. Now resets don't happen very often but they do happen once in a while during updates when things are changing for that species. So if fallow deer were getting a remake or a remodel they would more than likely have to have a population reset. And what a reset is is basically if fallow deer were being reset all of the fallow deer on your map are going to vanish and they are going to be replaced with a completely different population of fallow deer. So if you did have, say, a level 4 melanistic fallow on your map and there was a reset, that level 4 mellow would be gone. Now, the other thing it is important to know is when you shoot an animal, once it dies, it is gone forever. If you shoot an animal and leave the map before the animal dies, when you come back, that animal will be alive and well on your map without a bullet in it. It. But once the animal dies, there is nothing you can do to make that animal alive again. It is gone forever. Now here is a question I get asked quite a lot. Do I have to harvest my animals in order to get a respawn? And the answer to that question is no. You don't have to, but I would encourage you to do so. Lay down, dude. Thank you. Thought we should take a couple fallow down. Now, when you are doing a great one grind and you are not picking up your animals, what we actually call that is dirty grinding. Now, it's your game. You can play it any way that you want. But what I'm trying to do today is explain to you the ramifications for your game, not whether you should do it or not. Beautiful. Look at the beautiful respawns in this zone. Very sweet. Now, if you are not picking up your kills or claiming your harvests, you can still spawn diamonds. You can still spawn rares. But if you are doing a great one grind, you're basically wasting your time. It is my understanding that you can no longer spawn a great one when you do not harvest your kills. Either that or it is going to take a very long time. So you definitely want to pick up your kills when you are grinding for any great one. Now I pick up all my kills all the time. First and foremost, leaving all that cash literally on the ground is not what you want to do. It is really nice to have a nice big chunk of cash in the game, especially when you want to start a new grind and you need to purchase 16 tents and 16 tripods at $16,000 each. That is a lot of cash. Now let's talk about what happens when you shoot an animal. And we're gonna take a couple down from this zone. So when you shoot any animal, it is going to respawn. Now, where it respawns, that is the question. Now, they can respawn right back into this zone, but they don't necessarily have to. Animals will respawn into the same home range or respawn area, for lack of a better term. So, we don't know exactly where these particular respawn areas are, but when you shoot an animal, it's not necessarily going to respawn into that exact zone, but it can. Now, the other thing that's important to know is that when you shoot a male, it is going to respawn as a male. Male, and when you shoot a female, it is going to respawn as a female. Now I've had people say to me, I shot males and I got females back. My males are definitely respawning as females. And that just isn't the case. What's actually happening is if you jump into a brand new fresh game session, meaning you have shot nothing, you're just starting, nothing is in respawn heaven. If you come and you shoot two males from a zone and that's all you shoot, when you do get your respawns, you will see that you have two new male respawns. There is no way that there will be females respawning there. But if you're doing a rotation and you kill two bucks 
from every zone, but somewhere you shoot a couple females, those females can respawn at any of the zones that you shot from. Now it is going to be in their particular home range, so we don't know exactly where that is, but they're not gonna go very far away. So recently I have been doing a whole lot of tar grinding. Just a couple days ago, I spawned my first and my second Great One tar. They actually spawned 29 kills apart. Now, did I do something to cause that to happen? Absolutely not. That was just plain RNG and me getting very lucky after having a very long and not so lucky grind. But referring back to the point I was making, this zone right here, this one right here, is one of my favorite tar feed zones. This zone has been there since I started grinding grinding about 3,500 kills ago. And I think they're actually in there. I have always had two males and two or three females in this zone. Now, over time, I came into this zone and I found six females. Now, I wasn't very happy to see that because this is definitely a zone I want to continue grinding. So you know what I did? I kind of did this as an experiment. I wasn't sure what would happen, but I decided to shoot out three of the females. And you know what happened when I came back? I had two males and four females in this zone. Did the females respawn as males? They definitely did not. I didn't just come into the game, shoot the females out of this zone, and then leave. I did it during a rotation when I was shooting several other males. So what would have happened is the males that respawned into this zone are the respawns from another zone that I had shot two males out of, and those females that I shot would have then respawned into one of my other zones. So if you do have a zone that is all females, but in a really good spot that you'd like to use, in your grind while you're doing a rotation shoot some of those females you might just get males back in their place so basically it just opens a spot for a male to spawn into so basically that is how that works now, there definitely is still a lot of mystery about exactly how respawns work. EW does keep it a secret, and I think that is a good thing. We definitely don't want to know everything about this game. A little bit of mystery is what keeps it interesting, right? Now, let's talk about need zones. Now, every animal on the map belongs to certain need zones. Not every species drinks, but every species in the game feeds and rests. Pretty sure all the ducks do, too. <laughs> I think so. Most of them do, but I'm pretty sure they all do. But they don't all drink, but the majority drink. So when you find an animal in a need zone, so for example, this tar zone right here, in a moment we will go and we will check the need zone indicator, and that will tell us how many animals belong to that particular need zone, and whether or not you have solos. And we are going to talk about solo zones as well. So basically, when you have animals attached to a need zone, the time frame for that need zone, so for this tar zone, is from 4 to 7. Now that doesn't mean the tar will show up exactly at 4, but they will show up at some time between 4 and 7, and they will usually stay there until 7, at which time they will leave and go to their next zone. Sometimes they leave 10 or 15 minutes early, and that actually has been happening more recently. So once you do find an animal's need zone, then you know where you can locate that animal if you are not shooting it immediately. Now, in order to protect your need zones, this is important to know. You can only kill 3 animals from any need zone and the fourth kill will delete the zone unless you are shooting from any hunting structure and I mean any hunting structure including the ones that come on the map uh, tripods duck blinds tree stands all of them will protect your need zones so when you are shooting from any hunting structure you can then kill 15 animals and then the 16th kill will delete the need zone and what happens to that zone is it appears somewhere else on the map and we just don't know where usually it is fairly close by but but not necessarily. And to find those animals that were in that need zone, you would then have to go and refine the zone. And that is very time consuming and a giant pain in the neck. So when you do a grind, I do recommend shooting from any hunting structure. It's almost impossible to delete a zone when you are hunting from a structure. Now, another thing that's really important to know is when you are shooting animals in a need zone, you never wanna shoot that zone down to one animal because if you do, it will never get respawns again. Essentially, it breaks the zone. So when I am coming to a zone, I always count how many animals are in the zone. Even if I had five tar in this zone last rotation, that does not mean I'm going to have five here this rotation because they don't necessarily respawn into the same zone. So I count them. If I have three, I'm only going to shoot one animal because I need to leave two in the zone. If I have four, then I will shoot two. And if I have five, then it's okay to shoot three. You always want to leave at least two in that zone. 
Now this can get confusing, so if you guys do have questions, definitely leave them in the comments and I will go through them and I will do my best to answer all of them. Because I want you guys to understand this because this affects everything you do in the game. Double splat, beautiful. Now when you shoot any animal, it is going to respawn, as you know, as the same sex, but it is going to come back either a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. But as you shoot more and more animals, you are eventually going to spawn bigger animals. And the more animals you shoot, the higher the chances that you will eventually spawn a diamond or a rare. And basically spawning a rare comes down to RNG and RNG stands for random number generator or luck. So does the amount of kills it takes in order to spawn a great one. I have many people ask me at live streams, how many kills does it take to spawn this kind of great one or that kind of great one? Well, that's not how great one grinds work. Basically, I try to explain it like this. Every time you do a grind, it's like rolling the dice. The number you get is going to be different every time. Sometimes you're going to have a long grind. Sometimes you're going to have a short grind. And lots of time, you're going to have grinds right down in the middle. And I'd say in good average is around 2,000 kills. And yes, I am grinding with the 300. Now, oftentimes when you are doing a grind, you'll come to a zone and this is what you're gonna see no respawns. Now there are things you can do in order to encourage respawns to hurry it up, basically. Now we used to leave the map and come back and that used to force respawns and with the last update that is no longer the case. Leaving the game will not cause you to get respawns anymore so there's just no point in doing it. Now the other thing I wanted to share with you guys is when you do not have respawns and I find my moose and medved take for ever to show up. What I do is the one minute trick. Okay, we need to find a zone that has no respawns. This one was good, but then they started to show up. Now you'll notice also is when you show up at a zone, you'll start to see the animals walking in, even when it's five minutes before the end of the zone time. And basically when you enter the zone area, that encourages the animals to then start to show up. That's why they always start walking in when you show up. <laughs> so the one thing you can do is if you have no respawns, respawns, go to the next zone. If there's nothing there, just keep going to the next zone and cycle back. Just by coming here, that will basically alert them and get them to start coming into their zone. Now, the other thing you can try, and this works really well for me, even after the update, is moving the time forward by one minute. And this is called the one minute trick. So let's go find a zone with no respawns. Okay, I have found a zone that has no respawns. So it is 1503. The tar zone here is from 14 to 1700. Now, one thing I am going to encourage you guys to do that will help you have respawns more often than not is to grind during the last hour of the zone time. So basically, when I change the time, I don't change it to 1500 when I'm grinding the 14 to 1700 zone. I change it to one hour before the end of the zone time, and that would be 1600 because the zone ends at 1700. So we're going to change it to 1600, and then we're going to check. They're still not there, so let's try the one minute trick. Now it can be expensive, but hey man, <laughs> I want my respawns. So we'll put the time forward. Now you always wanna do this in a tent because it is 25% cheaper to change the time in a tent than it is changing the time in any outpost. So if I had changed the time there in the outpost, it would've cost me 2,500. Okay, so it did work. There is char here. I just don't see any males because I think they are hiding or maybe they're just not. Oh, yep, they're hiding, definitely. So if you don't like where they are, you can always do the one minute trick again and they will actually spawn in in a different spot. Or you can fast travel away and come back but if you do that, you don't want to fast travel to a tent that is close by and come back because that will spook everything out. You want to fast travel a decent distance away. So I would fast travel over here and then come back and watch. They will be in a different spot. Let's try it. Oh, and that actually spooked them. Really? Well, that's very picky. <laughs> it did spook all of them. It did spook one. I don't know why. Unless I have a snow leopard in there. That's very strange. Okay, they're still there. Let's put the time forward by a minute and see if they've changed spots. And now they're gone. And that can happen too. If you do have respawns there and then you change the time forward, you may end up with nothing there. In which case, you're going to have to do it again or just go to another zone and come back later. But basically, you're going to get a different result each time that you change the time forward. And that is what we call the one minute trick. And they're back and now we have a male here. Okay, after spending all that money, I'm gonna shoot him. 
and splat. And now I'm gonna watch for any males that are running by, but I don't see any. Okay. Now when you are doing a grind, I would encourage you to shoot mid-levels and above if you are wanting to spawn diamonds sooner than later. Shooting really small animals does not help in spawning great trophies. It just doesn't. If you shoot something small or you shoot lots of small animals, there's a good chance you could get a very small respawn and you could get a rare fur on that small respawn. Wouldn't you rather have a nice big rare? I definitely would. So this is a need zone indicator. When you pick it up, it will tell you how many animals are in the zone and the zone time. So there are five tar attached to this zone. Now, sometimes when you're just setting up on a zone, you want to check all of the need zone indicators because you could have different ones. You could have two different herds sharing a zone and you could also have solos. So basically I could have one of these zones saying five and this one could say one. What that would mean is if I shoot the animal attached to the need zone indicator, indicator for one animal, I'm never going to get a respawn. Well, I will, just not in this zone. Anytime you shoot something in a solo zone, that will delete the zone and it will show up somewhere else on the map. Now, all predators have solo zones. So every time you shoot a predator, like the black bears or lions or tigers, that zone is going to delete and it is going to show up somewhere else on the map. That's just how solo zones work. Now, if you want to take care of solo zones during a great one grind, Basically, what I would recommend doing is on a fresh game startup, meaning you have not shot anything yet, you're just joining the game. That's a fresh game startup. You want to go and you want to shoot your solo. Now, if you're doing a grind, I would recommend not worrying about any solos unless they are at least a mid-level or higher. So for fallow deer, I would worry about large threes and above. For moose, large threes and above. For red deer or anything that goes to nine legendary, I would leave fives and I would only worry about solos level six and above. And basically you go and you shoot the one solo zone and this is the only time I'm going to encourage you to not pick it up. Then go to one of the zones that you're grinding. If you are using herd management, you wanna go to a main shooting zone and shoot the smallest animal you can find, smallest male. And and also don't harvest it. The reason you're not harvesting the animal is because you want both of these animals to respawn at the exact same time. Then you can leave the map and come back. They have a 50-50 chance of their respawn swapping zones. So if you come back to your zone and you now have a large respawn, very good chance that they swapped zones. And you will have to go and rediscover the solo zone once you do delete that zone. So basically that's how solo zones work. And when you are doing a grind, for anything like black bears, lions, predators with a solo zone, you don't have to count your zones in that case because every time you shoot one, they are going to delete. So don't worry about counting them. Now, say you wanted to spawn an albino tar, for example. What you would have to do then is set up a grind, shoot those males over and over and over. The more you shoot, the greater the chance is that you will eventually spawn one. That comes down again to RNG, random number generator. All rares, in the game have a certain spawn rate. Some are lower than others, but the more males you shoot, the higher the chances that that rare will spawn. And the only other way to get a rare is to scour your map and find initial spawn rares or head to multiplayer to find rares that way as well. That was a lot of information on respawns and how need zones work. It's all intertwined, but I really hope that does help you guys to understand how things work better. And if you did enjoy the video, guys, go ahead and spot that like button. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more daily Call of the Wild content. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna recommend that you watch this video next.